Hi guys, um, this is my second video in the last uh, last few minutes here. Um, just in case you don't watch the other one that I did, I just did a quick one on, on the Star Wars, on my Star Wars stuff. Um, this video is going to be continuing on with the series on men and women, sex and literature, whatever. Um, and so I just want to introduce, it's Father's Day, what a great day to talk about sex and literature. Uh, I'm sitting in front of my daughter's beautiful flowers here. I thought it would be a good backdrop for this video. Although this is the noisier side of the house because it's right next to the, uh, well, the main road there. So uh, I think just having a quick survey of the previous video I just made, uh, I think you can hear me okay. Um, but anyway, so I want to, uh, I want to talk about something, maybe just introduce something that I've been thinking about and there's no way to treat it uh, fully or adequately. Uh, I'm going to call this video, Are There Two Types of People? And I want to deal with the thorny subject of virginity. Okay, so I call it, it's a thorny subject because, um, well, it's kind of one-sided, isn't it? We talk about, we talk about virginity and we associate it with women. And there's good and not so good reasons why we do that. Um, and the science isn't well known for why, why men have an attitude towards virginity in women that women don't have with regards to virginity in men. Um, it's like apples and oranges in a certain sense. And people, people simply tend to simply dismiss the subject like it's, um, just because it, like it's sexist or something. Um, but my understanding of of the science is that it has to do with the various uh, the various psychological differences between men and women and obviously these are sexual differences women can get pregnant men can't get pregnant and that that there are psychological uh, implications because of this difference so when we look at literature um, again and it's easy and right now we, we do the foolish thing of dismissing the past too much and and by that I mean um, it's too often the case that people say okay well in the past they did it this way they were dumb in the past they didn't have our understanding uh, so there's absolutely nothing we can learn from that so um, and we do it today as well like people are dismissive of um, for instance, the Muslim teaching about you know virginity uh, in women before they get married and so on. Well, that's always been a Christian thing as well, um, and we're less apt to talk about it today because we well we don't want to hurt people's feelings and so on. And um, well, it's it's I mean we're a less Christian civilization is now less traditional than. Muslim society and I'm not saying that's a good thing I'm not saying it's a bad thing I'm saying it's just a fact and in fact what I believe is that it's both good and bad um, to be traditional is both good and bad um, there is a wisdom in tradition for sure and I think a lot of our suffering today in society is because we've rejected uh, the wisdom of tradition now the the solution to that is not to wholeheartedly completely unreflectively endorsed tradition. That's stupid as well. Um, and I mean, frankly, I believe there's a grain of truth in everything. Grain, at least a grain, okay? So what's the truth about virginity? And what do we see when we look at literature? Now, when I, when I think of, of uh, virginity and I think of uh, love literature and so on, I mean, for me, the, one of the greatest books ever written is The Sorrows of Young Werther, one of my absolute favorite books. And just such a beautiful story, tragic and sad as well. Um, or, if, or if you look at another one of my f absolute favorites, it's War and Peace. And the character of Natasha Rostova is, is, is an idealism as well, a Tolstoy's idealism. Uh, about about the pure virgin. Now, obviously, it was an ideal that Tolstoy had, and it Im 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 affected his writing, all of his writing, 
all the way up to his final novel, Resurrection. You know, it's a major theme in, in all these things, in all of his books, and for instance, the Kreutzer Sonata. <sighs> okay, but that's not all of tradition. So that's, those are 19th century works, wonderful, um, obviously works of genius, um, true works of literature in, in the sense that they reveal something fundamental, a fundamental thing about humanity. So you can't just shove it off and say, well, it's just 19th century. No, it's not. These are, these are ageless works. But let's look, let's go back. Uh, let's go right back to the Iliad and the Odyssey. Okay. Uh, we can go back to the Bible. Uh, what, there's, there's something interesting we can find and you can see it as well. And it comes up a lot, I think, in sort of the, the uh, less something I've studied a bit less. It would be, uh, for instance, uh, 18th century fiction. Now, 18th century fiction is, you know, both good and bad. I, I prefer the romantics, uh, the 18th century romantics and so on, or 19th century romantics. But there's something interesting in um, the 18th century. It was more risque, definitely. And the reason I'm looking at it is they also contemplated the roles of women and so on in some of the great, great works. And I'm going to list them here because I like with a text because I can't like, you know, you get tongue tied and so on when you're making videos unless you've written some notes for yourself. Um, I'm thinking like Maud Flanders and so on, like some of these magnificent, magnificent, huge figures. Um, and the top topic of virginity and the topic of remarriage. Um, I mean, these seem like, aren't these like opposed values or whatever? Um, but obviously 18th century people had a, a consistent ethic, which they adopted in part because of Christianity and in part because of some practical material concerns. Um, the ideal of, of, the, of the virgin. Now, I want to reflect on it in part from a literary perspective. And, and what I mean by that is, um, what, what is it, you know, what is it about the virgin that really resonates with, um, with these writers? I said Ma Ma Flan Maud Flanders, I meant Maud Flanders. Now look at her, for, for example. This is a character that uh, started off, you know, endorsing the, the values of the time, that, that sex is for marriage and so on. But again, tragedy after tragedy, uh, unexpected circumstance after unexpected circumstance uh, falls upon her and she gets married, remarried, married again, uh, lives with different men with whom she's not married and blah 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 and I, if I can remember and gets involved in a life of crime and so on. So but it's interesting and I, and I think I brought this up before and in fact I don't think I did, I know I did when I was talking about um, Jane Austen and virginity and purity and uh, the, the morality of, of uh, chaste speech and, and all that stuff in conduct, in the inconsistent conduct between men and women. Is it fair? Is it right? Is it good? Now, obviously men and women aren't the same. They don't experience sexuality the same way. Uh, one thing I found is that in, okay, so look at it this way. Is virginity important for some people, but not for others? This is the question I want to ask. Is it important for some people, not for others? Why, why not? And virginity is, a, is not about some kind of mystical or sacramental purity. I think the, sacrament, the sacramentalism and the mysticism come in and, and uh, Subsequently, after the fact, because there's a value there that the that so what is the value of virginity? It's not about like you use language of uh, you use medical language like purity and and infection and stuff like that. But these are these are these are uh, metaphorical waves of uh, really masking masking the the point. And here's what I've been been working on. Here's what I've been thinking about. Virginity is about 
is about um, trust, loyalty. That somewhere along the lines, people have discovered and men have discovered that loyalty and respect, devotion, obedience, that these aren't um, that these aren't really things you can you can pull away from uh, sexual exclusivity. Okay, and let me let me. That's a very that's a very analytical way of putting it. So that a virgin is more uh, someone who's a virgin on her wedding night is more likely to develop those essential those things that are essential to a man that he has to be respected um, that he has to feel secure um, because I guess they men have realized over the centuries over the millennia that a woman a woman can only respect a man when he's not one amongst many okay and that something happens to a woman and this is the important concept of pair bonding. We see it in different species, but apparently we see it especially in, in mankind, pair bonding. Um, now, are there just two different kinds of people? Now, now obviously we, we talk about people like there's introverts and extroverts, and there's lots of different kinds of personalities out there. But why? And, and as I as I read literature and as I read, uh, watch YouTube videos and listen to what different people have to say, why is it that virginity seems important to one group of people? Virginity, exclusivity, uh, a wife's honoring and respect for her husband, admiration for him. Why why does this seem to be important for one? one kind of man but not another kind of man okay let, let me let me compare it like you know as i'm as i'm working through proust that i don't think that concept comes up anywhere um but you can't read tolstoy without it so why does proust not see that anywhere in the fin de sacre culture the decadent culture of late 19th century france why is that not anywhere why is that not seen as an important concept? And why is it like everything in Tolstoy? Um, you know, uh, why is it important to someone like Keats? Yes and no, but almost irrelevant and scorned by people like Shelley or Byron. So are there two kinds of people? Like there's autistic people who focus on stuff and who can't make eye contact. And then there's non-autistic people who don't zone in and are more sociable in that sense. Are there people for whom virginity is important and for people for whom it's not? Does this come down to a man's self-conception so that he feels that he needs to be loved in that exclusive way? And I, I think, and I, and I, and I will go on record as saying this, and I know it's not, it's not politically correct, but I think only virgins can love a certain way. Um, by virgins, that's just shorthand for um, a woman who's only had sex with one man. I think a pair bond is is very is a very important thing in people's lives. And if look at, I think of Turgenev's uh, novel First Love. And it's so interesting that the start of that novel, it's, an, it's not that long, so maybe it's a novella, um, they, they're sitting around discussing their first loves. And, and the, the novel focuses on one of their stories, a first love. Okay, so they obviously understood that this was a vital, important thing. Not, they don't talk about marriage, they talk about first love. So I don't know. The tendency today is to say, well, if a man can't be with a woman who's been with other men, then he's insecure. 
well, that's all fine and good, but why is that sexual preference not something that's uh, respected today? Um, whereas every other sexual preference is supposed to be respected. So my thinking about this is based upon, you know, whatever, 40 plus years of life, but also the things I've read, different people whose videos I've watched, and, but especially the literature and seeing how others navigate and value the subject or don't value the subject. So it's not about, like to me, it's, it's I don't like when virginity is treated like, uh, like a, I don't like when virginity is treated like a physical fact rather than a psychological fact. Um, so that's how I look at it, for instance. Um, and I can't help but notice, I live in a very, uh, a very, a very Christian little town. And so, and my church is very traditional. And, and it's, I've noticed that the, the girls who are virgins when they married their husbands, they act differently. They, they look at their husbands differently. They, they treat them differently. Um, than those who, than those who weren't. Now, I'm not making a value judgment here. I'm making a, an observation. I mean, the value judgment is your own. I don't really care, uh, what you think of it. And I don't really care what I think about it. Um, so anyway, so this is something I'll continue to, to look into, uh, to think about like what, are, are, are any authors, and, I, and maybe I'll think of uh, male authors, are they, are they saying anything uh, insightful about virginity in that sense? Or are they just treating it like it's a physical, it's a physical box to ch check? Like, yeah, she's a virgin, great. Okay, yeah, she has a dowry, great. Yeah, she speaks French well, great. Yeah, she speaks German, great. Yeah, she's been educated, great okay whatever or or is there something insightful that's being offered forth for for this because i think it's important and we don't speak of it today um because we're afraid we're afraid to speak of it because we're afraid to hurt people by observations but i think we should make them i think we should make them anyway so anyway just just a thought off the top of my head well not off the top of my head but just a beginning to think through these things so anyway, thanks guys. Um, hope you have a great day.